Have you ever spent time in Fusion creating a tool path on one of your designs and said, man, I wish I could use this on another design without having to recreate it? Well, there is, and it's called Cam Templates. So let's take a look at how we can use this powerful tool. So you might find yourself creating tool paths on your designs, such as like facing operations, uh, you know, adaptive clearing and pocketing. And you might tell yourself, man, I use these tool paths and these settings over and over again, even on different designs, such as like this one here, it has, you know, facing operations and pockets and drilling operations, etc. Why do I have to recreate these tool paths over and over again? Well, this is where the cam templates really can save you some time. So what, what are they and how do we use them? Well, you'll notice when I right click on like this facing tool path, there is an option here called store as template. And if I select that, it allows me to save this as a template. I can give it a name and I can give it a description. Now this is just a singular tool path, but I can also select multiple tool paths. For example, you'll notice I'm doing a spot drill and then I'm doing a chip breaking drill. I could actually select both of these, right mouse click and store those as a template or even store those as a whole template. So if I store those as a whole template, I could name this, I could call it, um, you, know, you know, spot and drill or something like that and give it a description. Um, I can save it, you know, so it's out on the cloud um, or I can save it into a specific location, like locally if I want to. Um, I like to store it on the cloud, that's way, that way it's accessible, uh, you know, from anywhere. Um, I can also share it with other people on my team. So I'm going to leave it on the cloud. I'm just going to go ahead and save this. And I just saved my spot drill and my drill as a template. If I go to the manage menu, you'll notice that there's this template library. And if I click on that, we can now see in my templates on the cloud, we have this spot and drill and there's the description that I typed in, the spot drill and chip breaking. And it kind of gives a little image of the, the whole signature. Um, and you can you know, edit this, you can rename it, you can copy it, export it, import it, etc. And that's how easy it is to create these templates. Now I could even create a template of all of my tool paths. And I'll show you how powerful this is. I'm going to select all of these tool paths. So I'm doing, um, in fact, I'll just kind of walk through here. I'm doing a facing operation. Then I'm doing a 2D adaptive to kind of clear a majority of the material here. Uh, and then I'm doing a pocket with a smaller tool to kind of get in to the tighter areas. Then we do the spot drill, a chip breaking drill. Uh, then an, another drill with a larger drill. Then I'm kind of com coming in here um, with uh, these larger holes, drilling out those, coming in and doing a bore to kind of do the larger counterbore area, coming in with a chamfer bit and doing a chamfer on these holes. And then finally, I'm doing a contour that kind of goes around. Now, um, some of these I have settings so that I've come in and changed. So for example, this drill here, um, if I edit this guy, I can come in and you'll notice, for example, the cycle type I changed from a rapid out to chip breaking. For the contour, I changed um, for the heights, I changed the bottom height to be offset two millimeters from the uh, bottom contour. So you can kind of see how the tool path is about two millimeters up. Uh, in fact, let me go ahead and just uh, simulate this whole thing. So you can kind of see what that looks like. So it leaves a little bit of material. Uh, that way, um, you know, it's being held into the vise. And then when I flip this thing over for the second op uh, to do the bottom part, you know, there's still some material left. So the contour doesn't 
you know, cut all the way to the bottom. So I've set some settings on, you know, some or all of these toolpaths. And that's what's going to get saved in these templates. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of these toolpaths. I'm going to right mouse click and I'm going to say store as template. And I can give it a name. So I'm just going to call this, um, let's just call it, you know, standard part, standard milling part or something like that. And I could give it a description. So I'm going to say facing adaptive, um, some drilling, um, let's just say boring, chamfer, and outer contour or something like that. Just so I can kind of know what's going, going on with this. And I'll go ahead and save that. So we just saved this as a template. In fact, if we go into our template library, we should now see the two uh, templates that we've created. Let's jump over to this other totally separate component. Okay. I'll jump into my manufacturer and let's go ahead. I'm going to um, delete this setup. Let's just create a brand new setup. I'll uh, specify my stock point there. And then I'm going to right mouse click on my setup and say create from template. And you'll notice it's showing me the templates available. And there's the two that I've created, my spot drill and the standard milling part. So I'm going to go ahead and select the standard milling part. And you'll notice that it's brought in all of those tool paths. Now we see some issues with some, well, most of these actually. But the key thing here is I did not have to recreate any of the tools. So it brought in all of the tools. So, and all of the tool paths. So for example, the facing tool path, the adaptive tool path, et cetera. So you'll notice the facing tool path came across totally valid. It used the, the stock, figured out what to do, you know, and it used the, let me go ahead and edit this guy. It's using the 25 millimeter flat end mill to create that facing tool path. Now the adaptive has a warning. It says one or more pockets are missing to machine this toolpath. So let's go ahead and edit this and take a look. And it jumped me automatically into the geometry tab. And of course it kind of, it doesn't know what pockets it needs to machine because these pockets are different than what were used in this other um, design but it knows that it had to create some pockets. So I'm going to go ahead and hover over one of these and you'll notice it says missing selections. So if I right click, I can just say edit and it says, what are the selections? And one of these options is select same plane faces. I'm going to turn that on and let's just click on that pocket there and it's also going to select that pocket there because it's on the same plane and I'll say OK. So we've just kind of re-specified that we want to machine that pocket. I'll do the same thing here. I'm going to say edit and I'll say same plane and let's select that face there and it's going to select that other face over there also. So we've now selected those two pockets. Well, I don't have any other pockets I need to select. So I'm going to go ahead and select this guy here and just remove that out of there. Same thing with this one. I can just delete these that I don't need in here anymore. So I've only selected the ones that I need and I'll say OK. And it goes ahead and uses the exact same settings, the exact same tool that was used in this design and the same toolpath, the adaptive, and clears that area out. So let's take a look. Let's run the simulation really quick. So I'm going to simulate this. Go ahead and hit play. So there's 
the facing, and then there's the 2D adaptive clearing. Okay, let's take a look at this here. It also says one or more pockets are missing, so let's go ahead and quickly edit that. And pretty much the same idea. The tool, it's using the six millimeter flat. We can see it there, but all it's saying is it's missing the pockets. So once again, I'm just gonna come in and say edit and just reselect the geometry really quickly. So edit, I'll select those two, two faces and then clear out the ones that I don't need. So I'll just select those, say okay, and it's gonna recalculate that toolpath for me. Okay, now um, it says no faces are selected for the spot drill. So I'll go ahead and edit that really quick. Um, so it's asking for the whole faces. Uh, I could, um, you'll notice the options that I had used previously are checked. So I had turned on select same diameter. So I'm gonna say whole faces and I'll go ahead and select that one hole right there and you can see that selected the rest of them. I'll say okay. And just like that, we now have a valid spot drill. And then let's do the same thing for the chip breaking. Now, if I select on this, we can see that the, the drill bit size is obviously larger than the hole. And that makes sense, right? They're different sized holes. So I'm gonna go ahead and inspect the, the size here. Um, it's a 3.2 millimeter diameter. So I'm probably going to have to also change the size of the drill. So let's go ahead and edit this. And we need to select the whole faces. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. It quickly selected the whole faces. And I like the preview. Obviously, it shows that that's too big. But it selected all of the faces for me. And then I'm going to select the correct size. So we'll come in here and... Um, I want to select millimeters and let's do um, the diameter I said was uh, 3.2. And so I'll select the 3.2 diameter drill and there we go. I'll say OK, and all of the other settings that I had used, notice it says chip breaking. Let's go ahead and edit that again really quick. If I jump over here to my cycle, all of the other settings that I had used stayed the same. All I had to change was the geometry and the tool size. So again, saving me a lot of time. Now, in my other example here, I had other sized holes, but in this one, I don't. I'm gonna just use the, the boring command for this. So I don't need these other drills. So I could just click on this one here and say suppress. Same thing with this one here. I'll come in and say suppress. So even though they were part of the template, I don't need them in this case. I'm just gonna suppress them out of the design. But I do wanna use the bore because I have these larger holes here. So let's go ahead and edit this guy really quick. I'll select the circular face. Again, one of my options I had checked previously was select same diameter. I only have to select one. It automatically selects the other. All of my settings that I had set previously, for example, um, like my uh, linking, my passes, all of the, you know, like for example, the ramp angle, um, the degrees, etc. All of that came across in the template. There we go. Let's take a look at the chamfer. It says one or more contours, obviously. So I'm gonna come in here and edit. So all I have to do, I'm just gonna go ahead and clear all of these. And it's just asking uh, for the chain. So I'm just gonna select these um, edges here and say okay. Now you'll notice it gave me a warning message. Okay, a contour was not machined because the given lead parameters would cause, would cause an issue. So it said something about the lead parameters. 
Now, as I take a look at this, this is a pretty large tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit this and let's take a look at the linking. And sure enough, I do have lead in entry and stuff like that. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the lead in and lead out off and let's just see if that changes things. And sure enough, it did. So, so here's something interesting. Um, the, the template that I used had a, a larger lead in and lead out, but with these holes being so small, that lead in and lead out did not work in this case. So sometimes your template will work in one case, but it won't work in all cases. So I might have to come in and change a setting potentially. So in this case, my lead in distance was one millimeter. So I might have to change this to be something you know much smaller, like um, let's just say 0.2 millimeters or something. Let's see if that is valid. And sure enough, it is. And we can come in and see that that's you know a pretty small lead in, for example. Um, so just just a heads up. Sometimes the template will work in all cases, but sometimes you know you might have to come in and change something depending on um, the feature. Okay, and then the last thing is the contour. Once again, it's probably asking about um, a contour uh, that's required. So let's come in and edit. It's, you know, it's basically saying the, the closed chain, it's missing a selection. Let's go ahead and edit that. I'll select that bottom chain right there. Say okay. Take a look at it. And sure enough, we can still see it has that two millimeter offset. And just like that, we now have, let's go ahead and simulate this all the way through. It's using all of the same tools that are in my machine. I didn't have to recreate hardly anything. And we simulate that and we get the exact same result that we did with this other part just by using cam templates. If I come into the template library and I click on the Fusion library, you'll notice that there is a lot of pre-existing uh, templates in here already. In fact, you'll notice quite a few in the drilling area. So for example, you know, spot drill and drill, spot drill and counter bore, um, and you can see you know, what they do in the description and all that kind of stuff. So you might take a look at the pre-existing templates in here and see how these can save you time. So take a look at templates, uh, play around with them, and see what they can do to help you out. So hopefully you learned something new with cam templates. Give them a try and see how powerful they are. Here's some other Fusion videos that you might find useful. Make sure you like and subscribe, and see you next time.